welcome to Investment Trends. This program is brought to you with the compliments of the Zambia Development Agency, ZDA, and ZNBC. Today on the program, we are looking at the Industrial Development Corporation, IDC, in catalyzing and supporting Zambia's industrialization capacity to promote job creation and domestic wealth uh, formation across key sectors or key economies in the country. I'm privileged to be joined by the CEO himself, Mr. Mateo Kaluba. Um, he's the Chief Executive Officer of the Industrial Development Corporation, and he's joined us today on the program. Hello, welcome to uh, Investment Trends. Hello, and thanks for having me on the Good program. Good to have you on the program. Um, Let's begin by just breaking down what the IDC is, when it was uh, formed, and why it was formed. Thank you. The Industrial Development Corporation was established in 2014, and it was established primarily for two key mandates. The first was that it would hold shares in all state-owned enterprises, and it would therefore be a holding company and a supervisor for state-owned enterprises, with a view to making sure that these companies or enterprises deliver their return on investment okay. to their ultimate owners who are the Zambian people. The second mandate is that we are an investment arm of government. So we actually undertake investments for government, particularly those that require shareholding and uh, established under the Companies Act. So those are the principal mandates of the Industrial Development Corporation. So would someone be correct in thinking that the IDC is another Indeco? Well, the similarity between INDECO and IDC is that both enterprises hold shares in state-owned inter enterprises. And that's pretty much how, as far as the similarity goes. Mm -hmm. um, we are operating in two very different economic environments. Um, INDECO operated under um, a system where private sector was not allowed to flourish. We we operate with the private sector. We were, what, part of our mandate is to work with the private sector. Um, we go into partnerships with the private sector, so we are not there to crowd out the private sector. We are actually there to facilitate the involvement of the private sector. Mm -hmm. um, our objective is to catalyze industrialization, and we, in our strategies, we accept that we can't do that on our own. So you will find that most of our investments are with the private sector. So we are fundamentally different. If you look at our board, our board has got private sector representation and civil society representation. Mm -hmm. So our orientation, our structure um, is really different. So beyond the fact that we hold shares uh, in state-owned enterprises, uh, there's very little similarity between INDECO and the IDC. All right. You've spoken of um, catalyzing industrialization, the industrialization agenda of the country and, and job creation. How exactly are you doing this as, as IDC? So p part of the advantage of creating the IDC is that the balance sheet of the IDC, which is based on the state owned enterprises, allows us to do capital raising. So we use the balance sheet to raise capital, to invest in greenfield projects, and also to uh, invest in the existing state-owned uh, enterprises. Um, so to the extent that our balance sheet can, can support a particular investment, we use our balance sheet to, mm -hmm. to do that. Um, sometimes government um, makes available resources uh, to the IEDC to invest on its behalf, uh, particularly where there are government-to-government -government, um, agreements that result, for example, in joint ventures or strategic shareholding for, for the government. So primarily we use our balance sheet to facilitate industrialization. All right. Um, how different are you from the, for example, the Zambia Development Agency? The Zambia Development Agency is a facilitator of investment. So strictly speaking, we are a client of the Zambia Development Agency. We go to the ZDA when we need um, investors to co-invest with us. And we go to ZDA for information to do with in, uh, investment. We go to the ZDA for facilitation with investment with regards to incentives and um, investment protection agreements. Mm -hmm. So the IDC and ZDA, even though we both operate within the world of investments, we are, we are actually an investor. So ZDA facilitates our work in many respects. Okay. 
All right. Let's talk about the the so some of the state-owned enterprises that are under your care at uh, IDC. Um, I know that uh, a list was published. Um, for those who might not know and understand, um, just take us through some of the, uh, the companies. So the IDC operates in about 12 sectors. Okay. Uh, we are in agriculture, we are in tourism, we are in banking, we are in insurance, uh, we are in logistics, uh, we are in infrastructure. So we, we have a broad portfolio and our, our companies range from large corporations like Zesco to small um, companies like Mkuba Hotel. So most of the state-owned enterprises that people know um, are owned by the IDC. Your Zamtel, your Zisk insurance companies. Um, it's, it's a portfolio of about 35 companies at the moment. Mm -hmm. There are companies we own 100%. There are companies like the CMIH where we are majority shareholders. And there are companies like Zanaco and Indo Zambia Bank where we are minority uh, shareholders. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a big portfolio with a diverse um, structure in, in how we hold equity in, in the companies. All right. Um, how open is IDC in terms of um, uh, sort of engagement with the public? Because I, I feel like sometimes the public doesn't seem to understand what the role is and uh, what the mandate of IDC is. And so do you have an open door policy where you, you engage with the public and you speak to them and um, you, you know, sort of um, advise and, and explain to the members of the public and how you work also with the private sector? We meet with a lot of um, institutions okay. um, at our offices, so w there's a lot of engagement. However, what we've done in the recent past is to increase our, our, our publicity mm -hmm. efforts so that uh, more people know about us. I'm here to explain the, the IDC. Um, and we believe that as we roll out our projects, um, the projects will also uh, give insights uh, to the public w as to what exactly the IDC does and, and does not do. Mm -hmm. So it is an area where a lot more needs to be done. But like I said, we are young, we are young institution, and um, I believe that as we increase our impact uh, on the economy, more and more members of the public will appreciate what the IDC does. All right. Just a reminder to our viewers, you're watching Investment Trends, and today I'm speaking to the Chief Executive Officer of the Industrial Development Corporation, the IDC, and uh, this is Mr. Mateo Kaluba, who is uh, in studio with me today just to explain more about what the IDC is all about, what they're doing, and what strategies they're implementing to make sure that they catalyze that industrial um, agenda that the, com the country is so much focused on. Um, let's talk about the strategies that you're putting in place in order to ensure that, uh, you know, the um, industrial agenda that the government is working on or is trying to implement is successful? What, what tactics, what strategies have you put in place? So the primary strategy that we use is partnerships. We set out to go into partnerships with the private sector. I'll give you an example of our investment in um, renewable energy sector, which is in particular solar. Right. We invested in, in um, finding land, um, negotiating the agreements, and putting in a framework uh, through which independent power producer and the solar energy would come in. Right. And we have established uh, an SPV or a company as a result of that effort in which IDC is taking 20% equity and the international partner is taking 80% um, equity. So in, 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 that in this particular case, w what we did was we, we acted as facilitators and co-investors mm -hmm. uh, in particular project. I can take the example of uh, the project that His Excellency the President uh, recently mentioned in his uh, parliamentary speech, the tractor and um, a cultural equipment assembly plant. Okay. We are taking a majority shareholding and our partners uh, from Europe who, are, who have the technology are taking a minority shareholding. So it's, we, 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 we use whatever approach allows us to structure um, a company in a way that is comfortable for our partners. Some partners prefer to take majority stake. Some partners are fine with taking um, a minority stake. Okay. We also invest um, 
as IDC um, entirely, which means there are some projects which are 100% um, IDC, but the objective is that eventually we'll bring in private sector participation. Mm -hmm. Recently, we invested in the Zampam project. This is a case of IDC uh, investing in an already existing uh, project because we believe in the long-term developmental outcomes that can come uh, from from that investment. So we don't have a one-size-fits-all. We use different methods um, based on what exactly we want to achieve through that, that investment. All right. So as an investor um, representing the government, which areas are you planning to invest apart from the already existing ones? Um, you've spoken of energy, which is a very big uh, sector that needs a lot of players in there. But what other sectors are you looking at? And if you can connect this to um, the president's recent speech uh, during the opening of parliament, when he focused so much on the seventh national development plan, which has the, the four pillars of agriculture, mining, um, tourism, and, and, and manufacturing. Are these some of the sectors that you're also targeting? Yes, so we get our cue of where the priorities are from government. Okay. So um, the priorities of the government in terms of sectors are our priorities. So uh, we, are, we have pipeline projects in, in tourism, in manufacturing, in agriculture, but there are also um, some projects that are of um, perhaps strategic national interest. So uh, we'll, we have pipeline projects going into, into financing and okay. um, uh, other forms of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. So essentially, the government policy documents in terms of where they want to see investment grow uh, also act as our, as our guidelines. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are um, an investment arm of the government. Therefore, um, where the government says this is where we want to invest, that is where we also set as, as a priority. So um, uh, essentially, when, whenever the government says we're going into this sector, that is an instruction um, for, for us to get that, head that into is that a sector direction. Yes, that we should pay attention to. All right. Let's talk about diversification. And this is, a, I always say, is a, is a song that we've been singing for a very long time as a country. Um, how are you as IDC also uh, making sure that you're implementing this and seeing it come to life? Our primary strategy is value addition to Zambia's natural resources. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in terms of identifying areas or sectors in which we should invest, we look at um, creating value chains right. where jobs will be created, where wealth will be created. So even if you speak about mining, we'll, we will be looking to invest in value addition to our copper and uh, the other min minerals that we, we have. Um, if you talk about agriculture, we'll be talking about uh, value addition, whether you're, you're moving um, wheat from just being wheat to bread or whatever else uh, you mm -hmm. want to produce Conflict from it. So Conflict. Yeah. Was, um, you're talking about value addition to our pineapples. Uh, for example, we are currently um, looking to invest in pineapple processing in northwestern province. Mangoes. We are looking to invest uh, in mango processing in, in eastern province um, as part of our 2018 priority project. Mm -hmm. So our role is value addition. And as we add value to our natural resources, then government's diversification agenda is being, is being rolled out. So mm -hmm. that is how we see ourselves uh, facilitating or catalyzing industrialization. And, and ultimately, the outcome should be the diversification agenda that government is seeking. Right in terms of also uh, job creation. Let's uh, specifically talk about the, the master plan, the seventh national development plan, and how you are aligning yourself as uh, um, uh, the IDC. Of course, you're a, a wing of the government, but let's, let's break it down into how the various state-owned enterprises that uh, are under your care are aligning this plan and making sure that uh, we, we achieve um, most of it. So the theme, of the uh, seven national development plan uh, refers to not leaving anyone behind. Now, how do you make sure you're not leaving anyone behind? Mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about uh, making sure that they have access to uh, modern uh, infrastructure. You are talking about making sure they have jobs and that you are giving them opportunities 
to create wealth. Also, like I said earlier on, we get our cue of where to invest from government. And the Seven National Development Plan articulates where government wants to see investment over the next five years. So the, the Seven National Development Plan has provided essentially a framework of where we should set our priorities going forward. Um, as a consequence, for example, of the Seven National Development Plan, we are actively looking to invest in the farm blocks because that's one of the areas um, identified yes. for agriculture growth. So we are positioning ourselves to invest in the Luswishi farm block and in the Lansanga um, farm block. So the Seventh National Development Plan is really our guide as well uh, in terms of um, setting our strategic priorities, in terms of uh, making sure that at the end of the day when we are measuring the impact of the Seventh National Development Plan, IDC's investment should count to the successes of the 7th National Development Plan. All right. Um, let's talk about how you're working with uh, creating synergies with young people. We have so many youths in this country. We have so many entrepreneurs now who are coming up and thinking outside the box. And mm -hmm. when you look at the state-owned enterprises that, that are, you know, um, un under your care, you, we have a lot of young people who are in some of these industries. Are mm -hmm. you, do you have any deliberate programs or deliberate strategies that you have in bringing together young people and putting them, you know, sort of in maybe clusters and they're able to achieve some of their objectives? Well, in terms of our investment strategy, w we tend to invest in um, the core ventures uh, uh, in a value chain. Okay. But the idea is that small and medium enterprises should benefit mm -hmm. from the market opportunities that are being created through the core venture. So I'll give an example of the um, tractor assembly. Part of the strategy is that 30% of the input um, that goes into the assembly of, of the tractors should be locally manufactured. So the boards, the, 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 the steel products and, and other things should come from the local market. Now who's going to supply that? It's small and medium enterprises. And if you, if you, if you um, analyze government policy uh, as a whole, really the thrust of small and medium scale enterprises is the youth of this country. So we believe that by s investing in, in the core ventures, we will be creating long value chains that will make sure that the small players, the, small int uh, the, the, the young entrepreneurs, the young yeah. innovators are able to, to find, ultimately find a market in the, in the larger uh, corporations. This is a model that um, has worked um, in Asia where um, small and medium enterprises have grown around um, large corporations almost in, in a cluster formation. So um, to the extent that we are investing in opening up um, new sectors in value chains, we are creating opportunities for our youths and our, um, our women in, through their uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Okay. Yes. Um, taking you back to, you know, when we started the program, you were just defining what the IDC is, what its mandate is, and I asked you whether there were any comparisons or similarities between, you know, the IDC and INDECO. Then what lessons do you think we can learn from the past um, running INDECO and what happened with it and, and now we have the IDC? What lessons can we pull from that in order to move forward and have this become successful and last long? I think the, f the first lesson is that we should be clear what the objective of these enterprises are. So uh, rather than just wanting these enterprises to deliver certain products, mm -hmm. the primary objective is that they must deliver a return on investment. Ultimately, they must deliver dividends. Um, there was no emphasis on dividends in the, in the past. The, the emphasis was produce, 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 produce. We are saying to enterprises, you must be profitable. We are saying to enterprises, you must be competitive. We are saying to them, you must be efficient. So to the extent that we are demanding of them to perform like any other company in the pri uh, private sector, mm -hmm. we believe that we, we are position, positioning them for something fundamentally different. Right. If you look across the world, there are many examples um, of successful state-owned enterprises. In fact, some of the most aggressive companies in the world today 
are owned uh, by government. So really there's no excuse for our enterprises to continue to take a position that says, well, our job is to do whatever it is the government wants mm -hmm. to do. We are making sure that the boards that are put in place in these companies are boards that are going to demand that these chief executive officers um, deliver. My board demands that I must, I must deliver. So in, 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 in turn, we're demanding from, from the boards to say, put in place strategies and demand performance from your management mm -hmm. that makes sure that this makes sure that these companies are profitable and ultimately we as IDC, as shareholder, we expect a dividend from you. Our shareholder, the Minister of Finance and the government as a whole, expect a dividend from us. So I think the mindset is what is going to be the fundamental difference okay. between enterprises of yesterday, state-owned enterprises of yesterday and state-owned enterprises um, of today. Of today. Yeah. All right. Um, where do you see the IDC yeah. and the future of um, this economy in the next five years? Looking at we have uh, the IDC in place and uh, um, we have these state-owned enterprises under your, your care. Um, where do you see them in the next five years? His Excellency the President uh, gave us a task. He said he wants to see state-owned enterprises on the Lusaka Stock Exchange. So, um, first of all, we see a good number of state-owned enterprises trading on the Lusaka Stock Exchange, giving opportunity for you and me to, to hold shares. Also, because of the investments that we, we are rolling out in terms of greenfields, we expect new sectors to open up. Right now, we are talking about grid-scale solar. That's mm -hmm. a, a sector that um, uh, just last year did not exist. Um, but if you look at um, our latest effort in what we call round two of our solar project, we have some of the largest renewable energy companies in the world looking to invest um, in this country. So a whole new sector has opened up, new jobs have opened up. And this is going to be the story that we hope will be told about IDC uh, over the next five years, okay. that we, we play the catalytic role in bringing in investment opportunities and opening up sectors for, for investment. Okay. So um, it's, it's an exciting uh, next five years, and um, we're looking forward. All right. As we wind up, uh, Mr. Kalua, your final words to your fellow investors and uh, those people who are looking to partner with you. What are, what are your parting words? The IDC was created to be a partner to the private sector. Um, in addition to other methods of investment that it has. We are a solid partner and the advantage we have is that just like the private sector, our objective is a return on investment. So they have a partner who sees business in the same way that they see it. So we are looking for opportunities in value addition. So those investors that are looking to invest in value addition, they should come to the IDC and we can have a chat about uh, the future. All right. Thank you so much, CEO, for Thank coming you. through to the program. It's uh, been an honor having you on the I show. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Right. So there you have it. Um, very interesting remarks coming from the Chief Executive Officer of the Industrial Development Corporation. Uh, he graced our show today and uh, we had quite a, an, an interesting chat. And I'm sure that for those of you who have been having um, doubts and probably didn't understand what it's all about, now you know something. This is where we wrap up the show. Thank you so much for watching. Join us next time for another interesting topic on investment trends. Bye-bye.